Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. In this video, I'm going to cover what support you should play if you find yourself in the role and don't normally mean it. The champions I mentioned will be strong when behind and normally have safe laning phases and or good scaling, so let's get into it. Bard. I'm joking of course, he's a useless champion and no one should play him outside of high level play in which he is actually powerful. Besides that though, you should never play this champion if you do not play support. Soraka, one of the most famous supports in terms of ease of use. First up, she gets coins, so there's no risk required at all realistically to get her gold. She can just sit back. Soraka is one of the most simple yet useful supports in the game. Her kit gives her free movement speed when a target is low. This can also help in kiting and staying relatively safe during teamfights. Her Q is a long range and can be used to get some HP back, or of course as a small peel or lockdown tool. Most importantly, her W gives her target insane amounts of HP with a relatively low cooldown. By simply sitting back, spamming this heal during teamfights or the laning phase, you can make your carry next to unkillable. The simple ability to help your ready carry from afar and give them theoretic thousands more HP can be extremely useful even if you don't play the role. Her E can be used as a massive disruption tool to stop caster carries or help heal for ready carry. Finally, the ultimate can get free assists from across the map to help her stay in the game, or simply to give your entire team tons of free HP by simply clicking one button. Assuming, assuming you sit at the back at 7 heals off in your ultimate and a decent E, your team will be extremely happy with your performance. Morgana. She is quite a simple yet powerful kit. Her Q can make picks for all of the game and during the laning phase. She has the longest snare in the entire game on a support this can be really helpful in locking people down for your team to get the kill. Morgana's W can be used to poke, push waves and most importantly to proc her spell thieves. Even from behind, simply throwing down a max range W with its tick damage will proc 2-3 to three of your spell thieves procs so giving you the gold regeneration for free. It's nearly impossible to deny a Morgana's spell thief uh, procs due to this. Morgana's E gives the target immunity to any form of CC for its duration. This ability single-handedly counters every single CC lane in the game. Blitzcrank, Leona, Thresh, Zyra, Nami, or, and even more can be countered by you simply casting a shield on your carry. Assuming you're keeping back and timing it even okay, you make your Eddie carry unpickable during the laning phase, and late game you also make them hard to catch. This alone makes Morg viable. Finally, her ultimate gives her AoE slow and potential stun. This ability provides plenty of protection and of course disruption overall. A very strong pick. Braum. A tank support will always naturally be okay at scaling, and one that specialises in defensive and ranged pick, which can actually sit back and you know do something, even from behind, can still be useful. So let's get into Braum. His passive gives him the ability to proc and potentially stun multiple enemy team members. This can be massively useful as a mass disruption tool. His Q can be used to peel, lock down or hell, even pick off an enemy team member, as well as applying that start game passive, which can help again in further locking them down. From here, uh, his range, you can just sit back and wait for that key opening, he doesn't have to actually take risks. Also, this ability does percentage HP damage, which means it just scales well. Bronze W gives himself and another ally potentially free set of defensive stats based upon his own armor and magic resist. This again can help him stay in the game in terms of defensive properties, so he gets away with about a third of an item and of course keeps his ally even a little bit more tanky with the free stats, making him even more useful. His shield will make him crap tons more tanky for free again, allowing him to just sit behind and still do well. The shield can also be used to protect the AD carry and backline very easily and even completely counter projectile oriented teams and shut down the enemy AD carry for the most part. His ultimate can be an amazing disruption, pick, peel, kite, engage, disengage tool, even from a minus 10 ability, if played well, this can be game changing. So overall, generally good CC, builds tanky, has free stats with his W and E defensive stats, and has a decent escape with the W and of course a range CC and lockdown if you want to play defensive. Overall a good pick. Nautilus, surprisingly one of the best supports in the game right now from when behind. His passive scales well all game and gives him the ability to root multiple enemies down for a long time. His Q is an amazing pick and peel till or even an escape till against walls for most of the game. Nautilus's shield gives him free defensive stats that scale with his HP, which equates to about 17% of his maximum HP. This can allow him to stay into the game when being a little bit behind, even an entire item for the most part. This ability also does some decent damage. His E is a further lockdown tool and disruption tool and with that base, damage and lockdown it's epic. Finally the ultimate can be used to disrupt, peel, engage 
and pick or more commonly used to lock down the enemy backline almost indefinitely. Uh, from behind the free stats and of course the immense amount of CC lockdown means that Nautilus is pretty good even from when behind he's still useful. Lulu. Fairy is quite powerful in terms of defensive properties. First up, she is completely ranged in all of her kit. This means she can sip in the backline and remain relatively safe. Her leaning phase is quite strong with the base knowledge. Her Q gives her lockdown and peel for herself and her team. The W can be used to engage or speed up your ready carry or help your backline get away. Or hell, even it could be cast on a bruiser like Aurelia to help her stick. Her E can do insane poke damage or give your team a powerful shield making them quite durable. Finally, that ultimate is a phenomenal peel and escape tool. It can save next to any target with the HP, it's absolutely immense to anyone it's cast upon. Overall, even if she's behind, if she casts her Q and W in the enemy and ultimates the AD carry, she's still, relatively speaking, being helpful. Sitting back and casting spells is generally quite powerful in this champion, so generally I do advise her quite heavily. Janna. Her passive is extremely powerful, it can be used to kite and engage upon your enemy. I cannot emphasize how important this movement speed bonus is, I do have a Janna guide, I don't mean to call it out but it generally it goes over a little bit better. The Q can be used to disengage or lock down any target. Janna's W gives her free movement speed, basically making her very hard to catch. For a player that doesn't mean support, this can be massively helpful in terms of surviving and positioning. The W if used actively can be used to lock down an enemy. This can help lock down the enemy even more and of course help you kiting. The E gives her AD carry or anyone who needs the AD bonus an AD shield that gives them increased obviously attack damage and of course a little bit of more survivability. Finally the ultimate can be used to peel or disengage basically any fight in existence. This base utility to help kite out uh, lock down your target makes her really really powerful overall. Sitting back uh, you can always reset team fights as Janna so that's really beneficial if you ever just see something bad happening. But the click of one button you're still being helpful. Just slamming the Q key and activating your shield on your AD carry is mostly what you gotta do. Supports to avoid. I'm going to be generalizing these champions into tiers and explaining why the tier of champions should not be played in a detailed fashion. Let's get into it. Engage supports Blitzcrank, Thrash and Leona. Now a lot of people are going to be saying, but wait, these guys are really powerful. And they are, of course, I totally agree. These champions surprisingly take a little bit of more knowledge of the game than their utility counterparts. Simply engaging, I see this a lot in generally low elos, just engaging as Leona can cost you the game, especially if your enemy knows what they're doing. If you don't have a detailed knowledge of how the matchups work bot lane, you're not going to understand when to engage as Leona or Leona or Thrash even. If you can't get an engage, you can be done for. If you're not very good in this lane, you can sim single-handedly cost your Eddie carry the, the laning phase. From here, if you go mid-game, you're going to be engaging bad team fights and dying quite a bit. Although you can make picks and be very helpful, landing these skill shots is a lot of pressure, a lot of support means will not like this. On the, in addition, you could pull in the wrong person. Also, you're not going to be very good at picking out fights and knowing how durable you are overall. Engage supports require you to have a large amount of game knowledge to know when you can engage when you're making a pick. If you're not good at this, you're going to just constantly engage and if you get behind on this, these champions are next to useless. If you're a minus 10 and Thresh and you go for the engage, they're going to blow you up almost immediately. Although you can still be useful, again, utility supports can be played safer and for a champion that generally doesn't mean the support role, I advise this absolutely massively. All these champions the engage supports are powerful, but for a, champ for a person that does not understand the role, I generally disadvise it, they're too risky. Just try and avoid them if you can, just try. Niche supports. Tarek, Alistair, Nunu, Zelians, all these guys. As try and stick to the mainstream supports overall, these supports require some sort of finesse and or have lacking kits in my opinion. Try and avoid niche supports, try and stick to what we know actively is powerful and strong. Try to avoid, you know, picking up the Alistair, although he is a good champion in the right hands. You know, if you don't mean him, you're not going to understand how to utilize him. Try to pick the more mainstream supports are more powerful and anyone can basically play them. So try and stick to those guys. And that's pretty much the end of the guide, guys. If you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it. If you like me and the content, subscribe. If you don't think it's useful or crap quality, you can also unsolve. I'm totally fair. Besides this, guys, have a great day and as always, best of luck in the rift.